today's session on introduction to the head and neck and different surface projections in the head and neck human is most evolved animal in the earth because in case of animals cranial cavity is smaller and eyes are projected laterally and nose flatter and the maxilla and mandible that means upper jaw and lower jaw projected more forwards but in case of human all these organs has been evolved first if you coming to the cranial cavity one cranial cavity will be there this cranial cavity is larger why in case of humans nervous tissue has been evolved and it became more larger to accommodate larger brain we need larger cavity also that's what cranial cavity is larger in case of human beings to give accommodation for the larger brain then if you observe eyes in case of human beings we need stereoscopic vision that's what eyes are coming towards the medial aspect and they are present on either side of the nose then upper jaw and lower jaw will be retracted backwards if you observe the ears in case of animals they are very large but in case of human beings they become rudimentary and the muscles which are present in the ear also become rudimentary because of that we cannot move our ears then if you coming to the chin region chin will be retracted little backwards and it gives more space for the accommodation of the tongue so these are the different evolutionary points in case of humans when we are comparing with the animal now we will see what are the different surface projections which are present in the front part that means in the anterior aspect what are the different surface projections which are present in the lateral aspect and what are the different surface projections which are present in the upper part and also in the posterior aspect right first we will see what are the surface projections which are present in the anterior aspect of the head and we will see the what are the projections which are present in the neck region also first if we take the surface projections from above downwards this part of the head will be formed by the frontal bone so this is frontal bone. this is frontal bone right then here on either side of the frontal bone here we can see one tubercle here or one tuberosity here here also one tuberosity these tuberosities what we are calling frontal tuberosities these are the frontal tuberosities these frontal tuberosities are more prominent in case of females if you coming little below here this arch is there here the bony projection is there this bony projection what we are calling superciliary arch this is superciliary arch here one cavity is there here one cavity and here one more cavity these cavities what we are calling orbital cavity that is what we are calling bony orbit these are the different bones which are forming the bony orbit within this bony orbit i will be present and also extra ocular muscles and related nerves will be present and these margins what we are calling orbital margins this is superior orbital margin this is lateral orbital margin this is inferior orbital margin and this is the medial orbital margin and it will be having the base here totally and here it will be having the apex and it will be having the roof floor lateral wall medial wall that we will discuss in detail in the orbit session so this is what we are calling orbit within the orbit eyeball will be present and extra ocular muscles will be present related nerves also present in the orbit then next prominence which you can see here this prominence what you are calling malar prominence or zygomatic prominence this is the prominence this prominence what you are calling zygomatic prominence or malar prominence that will be formed by this bone what is this bone this is zygomatic bone because of this zygomatic bone only this projection has been formed this projection is more prominent in case of males that's what this projection what we are calling malar prominence in between the two orbits here one projection is there this projection is nose but in case of animals it will be flatter but in case of human beings it is more prominent it will be having the root of the nose bridge of the nose tip of the nose and here base of the nose through the base two openings are opening here one here one these are the anterior nasal pores these are anterior nasal pores or external nasal orifice then if you coming little below this is the mouth this mouth contains upper lip lower lip and these two lips will be united at the lateral part and it forms a angle of the mouth here is the angle of the mouth these lips will be controlled by muscles of facial expression that we will discuss in the face then if you coming little below here this prominence is there this prominence will be formed by the mandible 
this is the mandible this mandible having one projection here that projection only i am showing here this projection what we are calling mental protuberance this protuberance what we are calling mental protuberance and this line which is present here what we are calling symphysis menti this is mental protuberance and this is symphysis menti so here this is mental protuberance and this part of the face will be formed by the body of the mandible and here this part of the face will be formed by the ramus of the mandible and here angle is there that means this one this is the ramus of the mandible this is the body of the mandible and this angle what we are calling angle of the mandible so these are the different projections or bony projections which are present in the anterior aspect of the face now we will see projections which are present in the lateral aspect of the face if you observe here here you can see one depression like structure this depression what we are calling temporal fossa this fossa what we are calling temporal fossa within the temporal fossa temporalis muscles will be there and their nerves and vessels will be present below the temporal fossa you can see one arch like structure here here you can see one arch like structure this arch like structure what we are calling zygomatic arch that means this is temporal fossa and this arch is zygomatic arch right this zygomatic arch will be formed by two bones here zygomatic process of temporal bone and temporal process of zygomatic bone these two united on forming the arch this arch what we are calling zygomatic arch here you can see one opening here this is a opening what is this opening this is a external auditory meatus this is external auditory meatus or external acoustic meatus through this external acoustic meatus sound waves will be enter in first through the external ear then those sound waves will be hitting to the tympanic membrane those sound waves will be entering into the middle ear cavity in the middle ear cavity sound waves will be converted into fluid waves those fluid waves will be converted into the nervous impulses those nervous impulses will reach to the temporal lobe of brain so this meatus or this opening what we are calling external acoustic meatus surrounding the external acoustic meatus we can found the auricle see here we can see the auricle here this is the auricle right and here external acoustic meatus of course auricle will be having the different parts that we will discuss in their respective chapters after external acoustic meatus what we have to discuss see here just behind the ear you can see one projection here this is a projection here this projection this projection what we are calling mastoid process actually this is a part of temporal bone so this process what we are calling mastoid process this is mastoid process this is the mastoid process then if you coming little below i already discussed this is the part of the face which will be formed by the ramus of the mandible and this is the projection which is present in between the base and the ramus this is angle of the mandible right so these are the different surface projections which are present on the lateral aspect of the head then what are the projections or features which are present in the upper part or superior aspect of the head this part of the head formed by if you see the cranial cavity from above these are the structures you can see right so the superior aspect of the head will be formed by frontal bone this bone what we are calling frontal bone and here two bones are there on either side these two are parietal bones and here small portion by the occipital bone right so these structures will form the calvaria or the skull cap skull cap will be formed by these bones frontal bone two parietal bones and here occipital bone see here parietal bone showing two tuberosities here here one tuberosity and here also one tuberosity you can observe here here one tuber here one tuber these tubers what you are calling parietal tubers or parietal tuberosities here also you can see here also one parietal tuberosity here also one parietal tuberosity these parietal tuberosities are more prone for fractures because this is the most prominent point it will only hits whenever there is any actions this projected part only will hit to the any hard substances so that fractures will come on over that tubers so these tubers what we are calling parietal tubers so these are the different features or different bony prominences we can see over the upper part of the head then we will see what are the different bony projections which are present in the posterior aspect of the head and neck 
this is the posterior aspect of the skull we have already discussed here you can see two tubers these two tubers are parietal tubers then here this part of the head will be formed with the occipital bone this is occipital bone right you can see one protuberance here here and here this is in the bone this is in the body this projection only this one what is this projection this projection what we are calling external occipital protuberance this projection what you are calling external occipital protuberance so this is external occipital protuberance and this is external occipital protuberance in case of bone from the external occipital protuberance you can see one line over here this line is superior nocal line and below that you can find one more nocal line this is inferior nocal line from the external occipital protuberance you can see one vertical ridge like structure which will be leading to the foramen magnum this crest what we are calling external occipital crest so in case of bony landmarks what you have to see this is the external occipital protuberance on either side we can form the superior nocal lines right then from the behind also you can found projection of mastoid process see behind the ear this projection is there no this projection what we are calling mastoid process these are the different projections which are present in the head region now we will see what are the different projections which are present in the neck in brief this region from here to here this region what we are calling neck region this neck region is connecting the head to the trunk it is tubular structure it is having posterior most part formed by the vertebra and the paravertebral and prevertebral muscles just in front of that prevertebral and paravertebral muscles along with cervical vertebra we can found visceral region that visceral region made up of esophagus in front of that trachea will be present along with larynx thyroid gland will be present parathyroid gland will be present on either side of this visceral area we can found the vascular zone that means here and here this region and also in this region that means in the anterolateral part we can found the vascular zone or vascular region in that vascular region we can found the carotid sheath and its contents what are the carotid sheath and its contents common carotid artery and its bifurcation then external carotid artery will comes out from the carotid sheath only internal carotid artery will be present along with that internal jugular vein will be present then vagus nerve also present these are the different structures which are present in the neck then in the midline you can found one cartilaginous projection this is a cartilaginous projection this cartilaginous projection what we are calling adam's apple or laryngeal prominence this is the adam's apple or we can also called as laryngeal prominence this laryngeal prominence is formed by the fusion of two lamina of thyroid cartilage that means simply you remember that this prominence is formed by the thyroid cartilage then you can see here one structure that we already studied that is clavicle here also clavicle and here sternum this totally sternum we can divide the neck into posterior part and anterior part by one muscle which is extending from the sternum and clavicle to the mastoid process what is this muscle sternocleidomastoid so sternocleidomastoid divides the neck into anterior part as anterior triangle posterior part as posterior triangle so in between the trapezius and the sternocleidomastoid here one triangle is there this triangle what we are calling posterior triangle within this posterior triangle some important structures will be there like upper part of the brachial plexus subclavian vessels and related nerves will be present in the posterior triangle then if you observe in the anterior triangle anterior triangle is present in between the midline of the neck and the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid this region what we are calling anterior triangle in this anterior triangle carotid artery and its branches will be present that means common carotid artery and their branches will be present in the anterior triangle along with that other structures also will be present that we will discuss little later mainly what i am trying to discuss here neck will be divided into anterior triangle and posterior triangle so these are the different prominences which are present in the neck region in the anterior aspect then in the posterior aspect you can see one prominence here this is the prominence which will be formed by the spine of seventh cervical vertebrae so this is the junction between the trunk and the neck when you bend and if you palpate you can see one projection at the junction of neck and trunk that projection is because of the spine of seventh cervical vertebrae because of that seventh cervical vertebrae we can also called as vertebrae prominence in between the external occipital protuberance and the vertebrae prominence here one ligament will be there 
one elastic ligament that elastic ligament what we are calling ligamentum nuque these are the different surface projections which are present in the head and neck region that's it for this session